guys, this is Mobin. We are talking about cardiovascular embryology. The lecture today is about the atrial development, which includes interatrial septal development, right atrial development, left atrial development, and uh, pathologies or clinical considerations. So, here if you see, uh, we have already done the partitions of the AV canal. Now, we are doing inter atrial septum, right atrial and sinus venosus and left atrium and pulmonary veins. So, that is what we are uh, teaching today. So, let us start. It is really simple and it is fun. It is one of the fun topic within the cardiovascular embryology. So, and this is one of the topics that is asked a lot and this is also a topic that is clinically very important as well. So, here we go. First of all, we will talk about the inter atrial septal development. So, what that the objective of that septum is to really separate the right and left atrium one. Second, it would keep during the fetal life, it would keep the shunt from right to the left, but not left to the right. So, that is the second objective. And the third objective is that once the baby is born and the lungs start functioning and it does not need oxygenated blood coming from the right side to go to the left side, then the that shunt should close and right heart should become an independent unit and the left should become another independent unit. So, it does have very important considerations uh, for, from clinical point of view. So, let us start. What happens is in the beginning the right atrium and the left atrium, the, pri the primitive atrium is one, one chamber. In that one chamber opens the sinus venosus which is the inflow. So, the blood comes from the embryo into the sinus venosus from there to the right atrium or actually atria from there to the ventricle and onwards. So, these are the common atria. This is the opening of the sinus venosus. We are looking from the front. So, if this was a heart tube, we have taken a um, um, coronal section and we are looking from the front. So, this is the opened up right at atrium. Here is a line diagram of the atrium as well. So, this would be the right side, this would be the left side. In future, this will become left atrium, this will become right atrium. Now, what happens is the very first thing is from the roof of the atrium almost in the center appears a crescentric uh, septum which is called the septum primum. The first prime means first, the first septum appears and from the center it starts going downwards till the time that it reaches the, the endocardial cushions. In our previous lecture, we kind of created a small diagram where we showed how the septum would come and combine with the cushions. So, these are the cushions are in this area. Here are the cushions, endocardial cushions and the septum is going to go and fuse with these cushions, endocardial cushions. I hope you can read these. Now, what happens is that crescent shaped structure continues to grow towards the cushion and continues to divide the right and left atrium. So, here is that cushion, that septum developing towards the cushions and the left and right atrium are separating. However, before that septum, the septum primum finishes to attach to the cushions there would be small degenerated pieces that would appear and there would be gaps that will appear. What I forgot to mention is this is called the gap between the free edge of the septum primum and the cushions is called foramen primum. So, that is the foramen. So, if I develop that septum here, the septum would look like this and here is the cushions, endocardial cushions. So, this gap, this opening, so this is the septum primum, this opening is called foramen primum. Ideally, this septum would continue growing and it would close and the foramen primum would go away. That is the normal process. But before the foramen primum goes away, what is happening? What is the function of the foramen primum? The blood from the right side is going to the left side, right? So, that shunt throughout the development of these septi, please remember that we want to keep the shunt from right to the left. So, some opening has to stay intact in the interatrial septum. So, right now this is foramen uh, primum. So, by the time foramen primum closes, there are small degenerative changes that are appearing in the septum primum and a new gap would appear in the septum primum and it is shown here. 
This is foramen primum, it is closing down, small gaps are appearing in the septum primum which will then merge and make this foramen secundum. So here this red thing here is the, is the foramen secundum. So here this is the foramen secundum. This black one is the septum primum. So here and here, these two are septum primum. This new, so now what happens is while the septum primum is undergoing these changes to the right of the septum primum, another septum, crescentric septum starts appearing as well just like septum primum. This next septum that starts appearing is called the septum secundum. Now it never completely separates the right and left atria, instead it makes a crescentric structure which will cover the foramen secundum slowly but not totally close. So this is the septum secundum. So what happens is the septum secundum kind of overlaps. So now the situation is that there is septum primum with a gap in it and then there is septum secundum that has developed like this. Now the benefit of this is that when the blood comes, so rather like this, when the blood comes from the right atrium, it can push the septum primum, go into the left side. So that is a right to left shunt. But if the blood comes from the left side, it would push the septum primum and it, it, it will push that against the septum secundum, the red marker in this case, and close the, the valve. So left to right valve will not work, right to left valve will work. So if I make that this way, this is the septum secundum, this is septum primum, this is also septum primum and what I have done is I have created, so this is the heart and this is the, so this is right atrium, this is left atrium. Blood can now go from the right side to the left, but if the blood tried to go from the left to the right, it would push the septum primum flap, the lower flap, this part against the septum secundum and it will close it. So that is why left to right is not allowed, but right to left is allowed. After birth, when the pressure on the left side increases and the left pushes towards the right, that would cause this uh, foramen, this flap to close and fuse with the septum secundum and permanently close. One more thing that you should keep in mind later in the development, the upper flap of the septum primum disappears and just the lower flap stays. Now in the future when the baby is born and the septum secundum upper flap, this blue flap fuses with the lower flap of the septum primum, then there will be a crescentric, I'm going to make it green, I hope you can see it. There will be a crescentric ridge left on the interatrial septum. That ridge marks the boundary of the fossa ovalis. So I'm going to make it here again. So if this was the if this was the left atrium, this is the right atrium, and this is the interatrial septum. This septum would show a crescentric marking or boundary. This is called the fossa ovalis boundary. This is the this part here is the septum secundum. The lower part is was the septum primum and so now they are fused and that is how the, the inter atrial septal marking will be, fossa ovalis will be shown. Sometimes that does not close, we will talk about that in the clinical scenarios. So that is the septum primum, septum secundum, foramen primum, foramen secundum and foramen ovale. So what is the foramen ovale? This foramen secundum 
covered with the septum secundum is called the foramen ovale. In the future, it would become the fossa ovalis. What is the benefit of the foramen ovale? It allows the right to the left shunt. That is the objective of it. The shunt went from first the right to left shunt was through the foramen primum. Then the right to left shunt was through the foramen secundum, which became foramen ovale when the septum secundum appeared. So that is the interatrial septum. Now let us talk about right atrial development. So right atrium, the best way to see the development of the right atrium is to see it from the posterior side, from the dorsal side. So this is the dorsal view of the heart tube. This is primitive area atrium. In front of the primitive atrium will be the primitive ventricle and then you know the truncus arteriosus and bulbus cordis. But behind the primitive atrium is the sinus venosus with its branches. So what are those branches? So here is the sinus venosus. The branches are, this is the anterior cardinal, posterior cardinal and common cardinal. Keep an eye on the common cardinal. This is the common cardinal. Then there is vital lines. There are two vital lines. This is one. This is another. And umbilical. This is one umbilical and this is another. So why not I make them umbilicals green. The vital line I will make them blue here and common cardinals can be blue or red or whatever. So this is what we are seeing from back. Now what happens is keep this in mind. In the beginning sinus venosus opens in the center of the primitive atrium. So if this was, if here was the primitive atrium, sinus venosus opened in the center of the atrium. So we are seeing from the lateral side it opened in the center. So this was the atrium from the front, sinus venous is opened here. Slowly with the hemodynamics, with the flow changes, the sinus venosus would start shifting towards the right. It would also start growing towards the right. The left side would start becoming small. So ultimately sinus venosus would end up opening on the right side. But what are those, those changes? What are the hemodynamic changes? The changes are this. Number one, there is an anastomosis between the anterior cardinals. So this is anterior cardinal and this is anterior cardinal. They develop an anastomosis and the blood starts going from the left to the right. So that is one anastomosis. So that puts pressure on the right side. Secondly, the umbilical vein and umbilical, um, sorry, umbilical vein and vital line vein on the left side. This is the left side. This is the right side on the left side start degenerating. So that also puts more pressure because now the blood from the dorsal parts or the caudal parts start going towards the right side. So that also puts more pressure on the right side. Also the right umbilical vein also degenerates and so the vital line vein would start becoming big. The end result of all of that is that sinus venosus now shifts towards the right and grows on the right side. On the left side, the remaining pieces of the sinus venosus here will become the coronary sinus. So this is the degenerating sinus venosus. Look, umbilical vein and the vital line vein are gone. The common cardinal is still present. The remaining part of the sinus venosus is going to become the coronary sinus. And this is the future inferior vena cava. That is the vital line on the right future inferior vena cava and there are more parts of the vena cava that will be forming. We are not doing vena cava, we are really doing right atrium. This is the future, the common cardinal here is the future superior vena cava. So due to this all, what happens is that the right atria becomes bigger, the sinus venosus has moved there. So now if we look into the right atrium, so now we are looking from anterior, this was posterior views, these were posterior views. If we look at it from anterior side and we open up the atrium, one you would see the fossa ovalis on the interseptal, interatrial septal, right? Interatrial septal, right? Now on the inside of the atrium, you would see a smooth part. That smooth part of the atrium is contributed by the vascular components. And what are the vascular components? The 
absorption of the sinus venosus. That is why the superior vena cava opens separately and inferior vena cava opens separately because the rest of the sinus venosus has become adsorbed in the atrium. So, where the sinus venosus has become absorbed, that is where you see crista terminalis, a ridge which is separating the trabecular part of the right atrium and the smooth part of the right atrium, that is the crista terminalis, it, it marks the sinus venosus. The lower part of the sinus venosus becomes the valve of the inferior vena cava. The, then you see the coronary sinus, which is re really the left sinus venosus, degenerated and small sinus venosus opening up in the right atrium called the coronary sinus. Rest of the pieces of the right atrium are trabeculated. These trabeculated right atrial pieces and including the right auricle are derived from the primitive atria. Now let us talk about the left atrium. Left atrium has a very simple story, it is a simple guy. In the beginning it was small, all the trabeculated part is going to be contributed by the, um, by the original primordial atrium, whatever little chunk it got from the atrium. But majority of the left atrium is developed by the primordial pulmonary trunk. Now the primordial pulmonary trunk here, primordial pulmonary trunk. This actually is a budding off of the right atrium, sorry, left atrium. So, left atrium creates a bud in the back which is the primordial pulmonary trunk. That trunk then starts getting absorbed in the right atrium, sorry, left atrium and it has four branches. It gets so much absorbed that all of it goes into the making of the left atrium and just the four branches are shown. So, at the end of the day, what will happen is, this is the atrium, left atrium, this is the right atrium. Left atrium majority, a big piece of the left atrium is made by the primordial pulmonary trunk absorption and the four branches, these four branches now have opened directly into the left atrium and all the trabeculated part the, and the auricle of the left atrium will be contributed by the primordial atrium. So, that is the development of the Okay, guys. So, we are talking about the atrial development and interatrial septum development. Here are some clinical uh, considerations to note. First of all, there is a probe patency, probe patency of foramen ovale. That is very simple. What that means is that if this is the right and left atrium and this is the septum secundum, these were septum primum, you could pass a probe that can go from the right to the left. It is inconsequential, it does not matter. All that it means is that septum secundum did not fuse with septum primum correctly or completely. It fuses after birth. When there is pressure from the left side, the septum primum is pushed against the septum secundum and they fuse. Sometimes they do not fuse and there is a probe patency of the foramen ovale. Second, septum, so, sorry, foramen secundum defect. And what that is again the same foramen is present. Why is that present? Because, so look at that, the, the foramen is patent here. This is the foramen secundum still present. And why is that? And that is you can also call foramen ovale is present. And why is that? Because the septum secundum or septum primum got too much resorbed and there is not enough tissue to overlap. So, they are separate from each other and so the foramen is present. Normally, again, uh, not a big deal. This is the most common. So, please remember this. This is the most common atrial septal defect that is detected after 30 years of age. And why is it detected after 30 years of age? Because of the hemodynamics in the right heart, heart, heart hypertrophy because of left to right shunt. Otherwise, still 30 years, it, it does not even come up. Then is the uh, core tri 
loculari by ventriculari. So what is that? Core, heart, trilocular, three chambers instead of four chambers, by ventricular and there are two ventricles. So that means there is just one atria. So this will be one atria and two ventricles. So that is core trilocularity, three chambers, but by ventricularity two, right ventricle is present, left ventricle is present, atria is one. So this is where the interatrial septum actually never developed. So that is that and finally, we have patent foramen ovale which is very much like the foramen secundum and that is that the foramen ovale there is not enough tissue to overlap and close it. So, so the premature closure of the foramen ovale. So what sometimes what happens is that during the uh, time, during the pregnancy the foramen ovale or the septum primum and secundum fuse. So the after the outcome of that is that the right side would hypertrophy, right heart would hypertrophy, right ventricle would hypertrophy and the left side or left heart is um, less correctly made or is atrophied. Thank you.